So you're studying for the SAT Math Level 2 subject test. You've come to the right place. I'm Dan from WeWillTeachYouMath.com. Guys, when you're using these videos to study, make sure you pause the video at the beginning when the problem first comes on the screen and try it on your own. Most of your practice should be done this way, actively and independently. Then, if after you try the problem on your own, you still find it tricky, that's when you watch the video explanation. In fact, you can use any resources that you have available to you to try to figure it out so that the next time a similar problem comes your way, you'll be ready. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. 47. If f of x equals log base b of x and f of 2 is 0.231, the value of b is what? Well, we have this given function. The function is log base b of x. So we don't know what b is, but we do know that the function's taking x as its input and taking the log with base b of x. So if you're taking f of 2, we have to put 2 into the function for x. So let's see what we get. f of 2 is log base b, we still don't know what b is, of 2. And we know that f of 2 equals this. So that equals 0 0.231. Now how do we solve this? <clears throat> Probably the best way is to realize how to write this log equation back in exponential form. So remember, in general, if you have, let's say, log base b of x equals y, then that's the same as b to the y equals x. So this base is being raised to this exponent to get this result b is the base, y is the exponent b is being raised to, and x is the result of that process. So the same can be said over here with log base b of 2 equals 0.231. This base b is being raised to the 0.231 power, and I know that seems messy, but don't worry, it's just a number, right? And that result is 2. So exact same as we did over here. And then the question is, what must b be in order for the result to be 2 when it's raised to the 0 0.231 power? Um, one way to do this is to just test the answer choices. That's probably reasonably fast if you have a little bit of an inclination as to um, you know, making an educated guess at what it might be. This is roughly the 1 quarter power, right? 0.25 would be a fourth. So, just as an approximation, you could say, hey, b to the 1 fourth to equal 2, what number would have a fourth root? Because this is the same as the fourth root, right? Fourth root would equal 2. Then you could raise both sides to the fourth power and you'd get b equals 16. So then you might say, alright, well, the power that it's being raised to is a little less than a quarter. So, it's probably a slightly bigger number than 16, so you probably start thinking 20 is the best choice. If you're not comfortable with that kind of guessing, because I really like these estimation methods where you kind of find out something that's close and then, you know, approximate from there, but if you're not comfortable with that, you can do this a little more, well, certainly you can t test the answer choices, just put it in B raised to the point two three one to your calculator and you'll see that D works the best. But the, the pure algebra way to do this <clears throat> is to raise both sides to 1 over whatever's over here. Consider a simpler example. Suppose you had x squared equals 9 and you were solving for x. Suspend for a moment the fact that you know the answer is 3. How would you get that? You would take the square root of both sides, right? But what is the square root? The square root is the same as raising both sides to the 1 half power, isn't it? Right? And it's because 2 times 1 half, power to a power equals 1, we get x to the 1 power equals, you know, whatever 9 to the 1 half is. Obviously it's 3. But um, we can use that same principle when the numbers are a little messier. We can say, let's raise the left side, b to the point 2, 3, 1, to the power of 1 over 0 0.2, 3, 1, such that power to a power, they'll cancel and end up with b to the 1. 
and whatever we do to the left, we also have to do to the right. 0.231. So this side just becomes B. And this side, you can put into your calculator just 1 over 0.231, see what that is first, and then 2 to that power. Or you can use parentheses and do it all in one shot. But either way, you get 20.1. That's the best choice. Hi, thanks for watching. If anything's still confusing or you need a little extra help, drop me an email, leave a comment, or give me a call. I answer every message. And if you want to check out more videos like this, visit wewillteachyoumath.com. See you in the next video.